In this course, we are going to use uh, measured numbers in a large number of calculations that we do in the course. And there are actually uh, rules for how to represent measured numbers when you do calculations with them. And those rules deal with the number of significant digits in your measured numbers. So I want to go over the rules uh, right now. Um, so as background, again, as I mentioned uh, a few moments ago, we sometimes use measured numbers in the calculations that we do in this course. And when you perform these calculations, you'll multiply two measured numbers together, or you'll add or subtract measured numbers. You're going to end up with a new number after you perform your calculation. So as an example, let's say that you made a measurement and something was 31 miles away, and then you measured something else that was 0.51 miles away. Um, these have these are two different measured numbers and let's say that you wanted to add them together and you'll get some number of miles and we'll talk about what that number should be in a minute and another example is you might uh, measure the mass or the weight of something and say that it has a mass of 32.3 grams and you might need to divide that measured number by 0 0.8 milliliters and 32.3 divided by 0 0.8 is going to equal some number and again it might not be the number might not be exactly what you think it should be and there are actually rules for how many significant digits that you should show after you perform your calculation so if you add 31 miles plus 0 0.51 miles, there are rules to, for how many significant digits you should show in this new number. And there are also rules for how many significant digits you should show after you take 32.3 grams and divide it by 0 0.8 milliliters. So I'm going to go over those rules right now. The first uh, set of rules is uh, deals with when you are multiplying or dividing measured numbers. When you multiply or divide your measured numbers, you should just go ahead and multiply and or divide those numbers. So let's say that we are taking two measured numbers, 32.3 grams, and dividing it by 0 0.8 milliliters. Both of these are measured. And if you divide 32.3 by 0 0.8 on your calculator, you will come out with 40.375 grams per milliliter. However, the rule for dealing with measured numbers when you multiply or divide them is you round your final answer, and this is the final answer, but you have to round it so that this answer has the same number of significant digits as whichever of the measurements that you used in your calculation has the least number of significant digits. So this measurement, hopefully you can see, has three significant digits, and this measurement actually has only one significant digit. The eight here is significant, the zero is not. So this is the measurement that has the least number of significant digits. And the way that we write our answer, we don't actually write 40.375. We have to write this number and round to whichever measurement has the least number of significant digits. And this is the one that has the least. It only has one significant digit. So we have to round this answer so that it only has one significant digit. And so by rounding it, we're going to round down in this case, and we'll round down to 40. And 40 without a decimal point has only one significant digit. So if I took 32.3 grams, divided it by 0 0.8 milliliters, I would write the answer as 40 grams per milliliter because this answer has only one significant digit and the rule for multiplying and dividing measured numbers is to use whichever measurement had the least number of significant digits. In this case, it's this one, which has one. There's a second set of rules. The second set of rules deals with when you're adding or subtracting measured numbers. And again, the first step is to just add or subtract your measured numbers. So as, as an example, let's say that we have one measured number here, 31 miles, and we're adding 1.51 miles to it. And initially, our calculator might say that we have 32.51 miles when you add both of them together. However, in this case, the rule is slightly different than the rule on the previous slide. Here we round the answer so that it has the same number of decimal places as whichever measurement has the least number of decimal places. So this one has, uh, has no decimal places. It has zero, and this one has two decimal places. So we actually round to the ones place here. Here, we, uh, this measured number goes to the hundreds place. So in this case, we're rounding to the number that has the least number of decimal places. And in this case, uh, this is uh, represented down to the ones place. This is represented down to the one hundredth place. So we round down to the ones place. And 32.51 rounded to the, 
to the nearest single or the nearest ones place will be 33 miles. So if I told you that I had two measured numbers and I wanted to add them together, 31 miles and 1.51 miles, you might think that you should write the answer as 32.51 miles, but the, the more formally correct way is to say that uh, the distance is approximately 33 miles, and you're rounding to whichever original number had the least number of decimal places. The last section that we're going to talk about in this unit is section 1.8 from your textbook. This deals with unit conversions. So unit conversions are basically when you take one measured number where that measurement is in a certain unit and convert it into a different number that has a different unit. So the two numbers might be different, but they're actually equal to each other, and they're just different because you're representing the numbers with different units. And your, your textbook calls this an equality. So an equality is basically when you use two different units to describe the same measured amount of something. So an example of this is 71 is not the same number as 180, but 71 inches is the same thing as 180 centimeters. And the only difference is basically we are using different units to uh, and associating them with different numbers. And there's an example here um, that comes from your textbook, I believe, that's showing you uh, different household items. And they're showing different units of measurement that are actually uh, equal to each other. So 15 ounces is one type of measurement of weight or mass and 425 grams is a different unit system but it's essentially the same thing as 15 ounces. Or another example is 5 ounces is essentially the same thing as 142 grams. They're equal to each other. These, these measurements are equal to each other but they're represented with different units. One is using the metric system and another is using uh, the American customary unit system which is what it's formally known as. So that, that's an introduction to unit conversions. And there will be a lot of these types of conversions throughout this course. So I'll give you one example of this. Here's the question. There are 2.54 centimeters per one inch. How many centimeters are there in 14 inches? Well, the first part of the question is just telling you the rule or the equality that we mentioned on the previous slide. In other words, there are 2.54 centimeters per one inch. You might think that these numbers are measured numbers, but if you remember earlier, one of the types of exact numbers are numbers that are part of a rule. So 2.54 and 1 here are actually exact numbers. This is the only measured number that we're talking about. How many centimeters are there in something that measures 14 inches in length? So how do we deal with this? Well, we write the relationship down first, 2.5 centimeters per one inch. And the way that I typically write this down is I write the relationship as a ratio, and I write the ratio as a fraction. So I write 2.54 centimeters over one inch, which is just one way of saying that there are 2.54 centimeters for every one inch. And then we write the question part uh, of this problem off to the right and try to make it equal to this rule. So we say there are 2.54 centimeters for every one inch, but I don't have one inch. I actually have 14 inches. So how many centimeters is that? And I'm right, representing the how many centimeters with a question mark. If you took algebra, you'd probably represent it with the letter x or some other variable name. But here I'm just using a question mark. And how do you figure out what the question mark is, which is what we're trying to figure out in this problem? The way that you do it is you cross multiply. In other words, you do 2.54 centimeters times 14 inches divided by 1 inch will equal whatever the question mark is. So question mark equals 14 inches times 2.54 centimeters divided by 1 inch. Here the inches on the top and the inches on the bottom cancel out, and the only unit we're left with is centimeters, which is what we were looking for, how many centimeters. And the answer will be 14 times 2.54 divided by 1, which is equal to 35.56 centimeters. However, if you remember the rule for representing uh, numbers that were obtained by multiplying or dividing measured numbers, you have to round this answer to the measured number with the least number of significant digits. In this case, it's pretty easy because this is the only measured number, and this measured number has two significant digits, so we have to round this answer to two significant digits. So 35.56 rounded to two significant digits is 36. So the answer to the question how many centimeters are there in 14 inches is that there are approximately 36 centimeters for every 14 inches. And that's uh, an introduction to unit conversions, although we will do this over and over again in this course. So that's it for chapter one or unit one. 
Um, in conclusion, at the very beginning, we talked about what chemistry was, just to give you a sense of, of what we'll be doing or what we'll be discussing in this course. Then we talked about units of measurement, primarily the metric system and the SI system. We talked about scientific notation, which is just a way of writing very large and very small numbers compactly. We also talked about measured and exact numbers and hopefully you should know the difference between the two. We talked about significant digits, which are a way of describing how precise a measured number is. We talked about the two major rules for uh, representing numbers that are obtained after uh, performing calculations with measured numbers, and that deals with significant digits. And then finally, we just talked about converting uh, between different units of measurement. And so that's it for chapter one. There are probably a, a number of assignments to do, including uh, quizzes and laboratories, and you can get working on that.